And welcome back to the Curious Kid Cast. I'm your host, Andy, and today we're going on the wildest space adventure of your life. We're talking about black holes, and no, not the kind you find in your sock drawer where all your missing socks disappear to. Though, honestly, that's also a mystery we should probably investigate. Today's question comes from Mia in Portland, Oregon, who wrote to us because, and I quote, I watched a movie where someone fell into a black hole and I couldn't sleep for three days because I was worried it might happen to me on the way to school. Mia, I have good news. There are no black holes between your house and your school. I checked. The closest one is about 26,000 light years away, so you're totally safe. Although if you see one on your morning walk, maybe take a different route. So, what exactly is a black hole? Well, despite the name... It's not actually a hole, it's more like the universe's most powerful vacuum cleaner. Except instead of sucking up dust bunnies and loose change, it's sucking up stars, planets, and light itself. Imagine if your vacuum cleaner was so powerful it could suck up your house, your street, your entire city, and then the light from the sun. That's basically a black hole. Don't try this with your family's vacuum cleaner, by the way. I'm pretty sure that voids the warranty. Black holes form when really massive stars. And I mean really massive, like millions of times bigger than our sun. Run out of fuel. You see, stars are basically giant fireballs burning hydrogen. It's like the longest camping trip in the universe. But when the star runs out of marshmallows, I mean hydrogen, it can't fight against its own gravity anymore. The outer layers explode in a massive supernova which is like the universe's biggest firework display. And the core collapses in on itself. All that stuff gets squashed into a teeny tiny point called a singularity. The gravity becomes so incredibly strong that it bends space and time around it, and boom, you've got yourself a black hole. Now, what does a black hole actually look like? Well, here's the tricky part. You can't actually see the black hole itself because it's, you know, black. It's like trying to find a black cat in a dark room while wearing a blindfold. And the cat is invisible, but scientists can see the stuff around it. A black hole has three main parts. First, there's the singularity. That's the center where everything gets crushed into something impossibly small. It's like trying to stuff your entire bedroom into a shoebox, then stuffing that shoebox into a marble, then stuffing that marble into something even smaller. It's so weird that our current science can't even properly explain what's happening there. Then there's the event horizon. This is the point of no return. Once you cross it, you're not coming back, ever. It's like when you're at a sleepover and someone suggests staying up all night. Once you agree, there's no going back. You're committed. Except with a black hole, instead of being tired the next day, you get turned into spaghetti. More on that in a minute. And finally... There's the accretion disk. That's the bright, swirling ring of gas, dust, and other stuff orbiting around the black hole. As everything spirals closer, it gets super hot and glows really brightly. Sometimes it shines brighter than an entire galaxy. So even though we can't see the black hole itself, we can definitely see where it is because of this glowing ring. It's like the universe's way of putting up a warning sign. Okay, so let's imagine you're an astronaut. You've got your space helmet, your space suit, and probably some space snacks. Because space travel makes you hungry, you decide to fly toward one of the most famous black holes in our galaxy. Sagittarius A star. It's right in the middle of the Milky Way, about 26,000 light years from Earth. To give you an idea of how big it is, it weighs about 4 million times more than our sun. That's roughly equivalent to 800 trillion billion elephants. I did the math. Well, I didn't, but scientists did. 
From far away, it doesn't look too scary. Just a dark spot with some glowy stuff around it. But as you get closer, something really weird starts happening. Time begins to act strange. Here's where black holes get seriously mind-bendy. Einstein figured out that gravity doesn't just pull on things. It actually bends space and time itself. The stronger the gravity, the slower time moves. Near a black hole, time slows down a lot. Like, a lot. A lot. Imagine your best friend stays on Earth while you fly close to a black hole. For you, maybe only an hour passes. But back on Earth, years could go by. You could come back and your friend is now in college, has a job, maybe even has kids, and you've only missed one episode of your favorite TV show. That's called time dilation, and it's not science fiction. It's real, which honestly makes black holes the ultimate excuse for being late. Sorry I missed your birthday. I was near a black hole and time got weird. Now comes the really big moment. You're drifting closer and closer until you reach the event horizon. You might expect a big flashing sign saying danger, black hole ahead, or maybe some cosmic traffic cones, but nope, there's nothing. No bump, no flash, no sound. You wouldn't even feel anything special as you crossed it. It's like walking through an invisible door. But here's the freaky part. If your friends were watching from far away, they'd see you moving slower and slower, like a video in slow motion. You'd fade and stretch out, getting redder and dimmer until you just disappeared. To them, it would look like you never actually fell in at all. You just froze at the edge like a paused video game. But to you, everything would seem totally normal. You'd just keep going. Okay, now you're inside the event horizon. Congratulations, there's no going back. This is where things get properly weird and slightly terrifying and definitely spaghetti-related. Because the gravity is so incredibly strong and changes so quickly, it pulls way harder on your feet than on your head. That difference stretches you out like a piece of spaghetti. Scientists actually call this spaghettification. Yes, that's the real scientific term. Somewhere, a scientist thought, what should we call this horrible stretching effect? And someone else said, how about spaghettification? And everyone agreed. Scientists have the best sense of humor. For a small black hole, this stretching would happen really fast. You'd be pulled apart before you even knew what was happening. But for a supermassive black hole like Sagittarius A star, things might be gentler at first you could actually pass through the event horizon without feeling much at all. But don't worry. Or actually, do worry. Because once you get deeper in, the forces become so powerful that, well, spaghetti time. So what happens at the very center? That's one of the biggest mysteries in science. At the center is the singularity. A point where all the matter and energy are squeezed into something infinitely small. And when I say infinitely small, I mean smaller than anything you can imagine. Smaller than an atom. The weird thing is, at the singularity, physics just breaks down. All our equations and laws stop working. It's like when you try to divide by zero on a calculator and it just says error. Scientists don't really know what happens there. Some think everything gets destroyed, crushed into nothingness. Others think maybe, just maybe, the singularity could be a doorway to another part of the universe or even another universe entirely. So falling into a black hole might be like going through the ultimate secret tunnel, except you can never come back to tell anyone about it, which makes it the worst secret tunnel ever. So could you actually survive falling into a black hole? Well, let me put it this way, probably not. If it's a small black hole, what scientists call a stellar black hole, the gravitational forces would rip you apart long before you even got close you'd be spaghettified into oblivion. But if it's a supermassive black hole, like the giant ones at the centers of galaxies, you might, and I stress, might, be able to cross the event horizon without instantly being torn to pieces. You'd be fine for a little while. You could look around, take some notes, maybe take a selfie, but eventually, as you got closer to the center, the spaghettification would kick in big time. You'd be stretched thinner than a piece of hair, then thinner than that, then thinner than an atom. So while you could technically cross the edge of a giant black hole, there's no way to survive what happens next, or escape from it. Could black holes actually be portals to other places? Some scientists have wondered about this. In theory, 
if space and time get twisted enough, a black hole might connect to another region of space through something called a wormhole. You could fall into a black hole here and come out somewhere completely different. Maybe another galaxy. Maybe another dimension. Maybe in a universe where homework doesn't exist. The problem is we don't know if wormholes can actually exist in real life. And even if they do, they might collapse too quickly for anything to actually travel through them safely. But it's still an amazing idea. It's the kind of thing that keeps scientists dreaming and makes for awesome science fiction movies. Now, you might be wondering, if black holes are invisible, how do we even know they're real? Great question. Scientists can't see black holes directly, but they can spot the effects they have on everything around them. It's like when you can't see the wind, but you can see the trees moving. So what's the big deal about black holes anyway? Why do scientists care so much? Well, black holes aren't just scary space monsters. They're actually some of the most important objects in the universe for understanding how everything works. They help scientists test the limits of physics and explore how space, time, and gravity are all connected. Studying black holes could help us unlock new technologies, understand how galaxies form, and maybe even learn more about the Big Bang the moment when our entire universe began. Black holes are like the universe's laboratory where the rules get pushed to their absolute limits. And that's pretty cool when you think about it. Okay, before we wrap up, it's time for the Curious Kid Cast quiz. I'm going to ask you three questions about black holes and you'll have five seconds to think about each one. Ready? Here we go. Question one. What's the funny scientific name for getting stretched like spaghetti when you fall into a black hole? Is it A, noodlification, B, spaghettification, or C, stretchification? The answer is B, spaghettification. Yes, that's a real scientific term, and yes, it's as silly as it sounds. Question two. What's the point of no return around a black hole called? Is it A, the event horizon, B, the danger zone, or C, the cosmic boundary? The answer is A, the event horizon. Once you cross it, there's no coming back, ever. So maybe don't cross it. Question three. What's at the very center of a black hole where all the laws of physics stop making sense? Is it A, the singularity, B, the mystery spot, or C, the cosmic crusher? The answer is A, the singularity. It's the point where everything gets squeezed into something infinitely small and scientists still don't fully understand what happens there. It's one of the universe's biggest mysteries. So what have we learned today? Black holes are places in space where gravity is so strong that nothing can escape. Not even light. They form when massive stars collapse. Time slows down near them. If you fall in, you get stretched like spaghetti. The center is a total mystery where physics breaks down, and they might slowly evaporate over billions of years. Falling into a black hole is definitely not recommended for your next vacation. But studying them helps us understand the deepest secrets of the universe. And maybe the coolest thing about black holes isn't what they destroy. It's what they reveal. They show us that space isn't just empty. It's alive, flexible, and full of surprises. So next time you look up at the night sky, remember that somewhere out there, hidden in the darkness, these incredible cosmic objects are bending space and time itself, and they're helping us answer one of the biggest questions of all. What is the universe made of? Thanks so much for listening to the Curious Kid Cast. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to share it with your friends and subscribe so you never miss an adventure. And if you have a question you'd like answered, maybe about dinosaurs or volcanoes or why cats always knock things off tables, head over to our website at CuriousKidCast.com and send it in. I'm Andy, reminding you to stay curious, keep asking questions, and I'll see you next time.